In this video, I'm going to show how you can use the Keyclock API to create a user. Now, this demo is going to show just how to create a user, but you can extend this uh, knowledge to create or perform other actions using the Keycloak API. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a client. Now, what I want to mimic is I'm going to mimic a microservice. Let's say I have an application running on a server and I want to use that server to create a user in Keycloak. So that is exactly what I'm going to mimic. And for that, I need to create a client that uses the client credentials uh, auth to grant type. So here I'm going to create a client and I'll just name, name it demo API client. And here we see have some pre-selected um, values. Standard flow here is referencing the OAuth2 authorization code flow, which is what you use mostly for like browser-based authentication. Like you have a, if you have a login page and you want to use that for your authentication, you'd use this. I don't want that because I'm using, I want to use like a, or mimic a server, not a browser. And then this direct access grants is for the resource owner credentials grant. And I don't want that because A, it's, it's a legacy or it's deprecated by the auth2 standard and B, that's not a, what, what I want. I want to actually use a client credentials, which means that I have an ID and a secret and I send that to Keycloak and I get back a token and I can use that token to perform actions on the Keycloak API. And in this case, my action is to create a user. So I do not want this. Instead, I want this service account roles, which is what is going to give me that client credentials uh, grant type. And the way I do that is that first you have to enable client authentication and then after enable authorization. And you can see here, automatically I get this enabled and I cannot edit that. So I'm going to save. So now I have created my client and if I come to the credentials, you can see I have my client ID is here at the top and my client secret is here. It's hidden, but I can view it if I want, then I can copy it. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use Postman to mimic my actual server. So I'm going to use Postman to generate a token. And then using that token, I'm going to try and create a user in Keycloak. So right now, if I come to the users, I have my demo user which I had from earlier. Then I have the service account demo API client, which is a user that's created or associated with my clients. So when I created this client demo API client, Keycloak automatically created this user because this is a user that's going to interact with Keycloak and then get the token. And then using that token, I can be able to interact with Keycloak. So that's where this user comes from. But then I want to create a separate user or mimic creating just random users because that's, for example, that's what my service wants to do. Let's say I just want to create a user name named John Doe or Fubar. I want to use Keycloak or my application to send that request to Keycloak and create those users. So right here, right now, I only have two users. So what I want to do sh show right now, first of all, I'm going to show what it looks like now. So when I try and create a user now, I'm going to get an error because this user, which I'm going to use to create the users does not have the permissions to create a user. It just has these two roles and these are not sufficient to create the user. So let me just demonstrate that. And then when I'm done with that, I'll create, I'll add the permissions here and then be able to create a user. Okay. So now let's head over to Postman. And what I'm going to do is that I am going to generate a token using this user. And then I'm going to try and use that token to create a user here. And that should fail because our service account demo API client does not have permission to create users. So let's head over to Postman and send that request. Postman here and generate a request. And I'm using um, Keycloak with TLS. And if you want to see how I set that up, you can look in my channel. I have the videos. And so now what we want to do is we want to get to our realm. And I have some autocomplete here. So this is exactly what I want. And it's going to be a post request. And what I want to do here is have the body as an X WWW form URL encoded because that is what Keycloak accepts. And the grant type is going to be client credentials. 
and this is an official OAuth 2 grant type. I did not make this up. So if you're not familiar with OAuth 2, I suggest you go and read the documentation. It'll explain more about the different grant types. And my client ID is demo API client, which is what I have here, demo API client. That's what it is. And I also need the client secret, which I can view or I can just copy. And so I will come back here and say client secret and just paste that in. And now I should get the token. And now I have the token. So now I want to use this token to create a user in or attempt to create a user in Keycloak. So it's going to be a post request. And it's going to be admin realms, uh, my realm name, and the endpoint. And if you're wondering how I found out about this, is if you come to the Keycloak um, API page, and if I come to users, it will show you what the URL looks like. So in this case, the URL requires um, the realm name and then the user's uh, qualifier here. And then you need to prefix it with admin because you're doing an admin um, request. So that's how I figured out how to, like what the endpoint is by coming to this page. And then once you're here, you can see what fields are required in the body. So for me, I want uh, to have first name, last name, which are all in here, first name, last name, email, etc. Uh, credentials and other things. So this is where you can figure out what your body looks like in the API. So back here, so I have this, uh, I need the token. So I'll come here and add it. Uh, no, this is a token. What's not happening? Let's see. Let's copy this and paste. Okay, done. And now in the body, we want a JSON. And I already have a JSON prepared with the fields that I want to be created. I'll just paste that in here first name, last name, all these correspond to what I just showed in the API documentation. And this is denied because this user, which is our user here, does not have the permissions. Like if you look here, these roles, these roles do not have permission to create a user. And what I'm going to show next is how you can add roles here that will allow you to create a user. So right now we're seeing this 403 error, which means unauthorized or forbidden rather, because this user is forbidden from permitting this, from performing this action of creating a user. So next I'm going to add some roles that are going to allow us to actually create a user using an API. Okay, so let's head back to Keycloak. So now we want to give our user here, which is a service account demo API client user, we want to give this user permissions to create users. So what we want to do here is assign role. So here we see we have filter by realm roles and by default, it's going to land on the realm roles. And here are the roles that are created by default when you create a realm. What we really want is let's filter by clients and we want something to do with users. So let's search for users. And we see here there's several um, roles regarding users. The one we want is manage users because that allows us to create users. So we're going to select this, say assign. So now this user should be able to create users because now they have this new role here. It says manage users. 
All right. So let's go back to Postman. If you run this again, that's going to fail because A, it's unauthorized, and then B, even if it was authorized, it's going to use the same token, which does not have updated uh, permissions. So this is failing because it is not authorized anymore because the token expired. But let's go back here and generate a new token. And this new token is going to have this permission or this role that will enable us to create a user. So I'll run this again. A new token is generated. I'm going to copy this, copy that, come here in my header bearer i'm going to get rid of this and i'm going to paste my new token and voila we see 201 as a status code which means it was created and if you go back to key cloak and come to the users now we see our new user has been created and it has the attributes that we defined in the payload so if we come to the payload here it has a first name last name email uh enable true here enable is true and then credentials here with the credentials the type is password meaning now that if i wanted to log in as this user my password is admin and it's not temporary so like sometimes if, if, if this was set to true that means like what the first time i log in I'll be prompted to change it because of temporary password, but this, I just set this to false because I don't want to do that. Um, but this is going to depend on a use case. And then I, again, this username is the same as the email. So we see all of this in here and now let's try and log in as this user. Okay. So we go to the clients and we want to log in using the account console. So we'll come here and sign in and let me go back i think the username is new to at user.com all right so let's say new to at user.com and the password is admin admin i'm in so the user was created successfully and this is how you um are able to use the key clock api what you need to know is that you need to be able to add permissions to the user that is going to be interacting with key cloak right so in our case initially i didn't have permissions cr to create a user and there's so many permissions in key cloak so if i come back to this uh, role mapping. This is a user. This is a permission I needed. And if I wanted to do something else, like assign role and I come to clients, you can see there's all these permissions here. So depending on what you want to do, you'd have to assign a permission to the user that you want or, or to the, to the service user that you want to interact with Keycloak. So for my case, for this demo, all I wanted was to create users. So I selected manage users, but maybe you want to create a client or you want to manage authorization. So all you, depending on a use case, you'd have to assign those permissions here to the user. And then that user would have the permission or the capability to actually perform that action in key cloak. So just remember that I think that's the takeaway from this is that whatever user is interacting with key cloak, they must have the permission or the capability. And by that, that means that you have to assign it to them deliberately once you create the user here it's not just assigned by default. So whatever user is going to interact with Keycloak, they must have the permissions based off of the roles you assign to them in here.